welcome to Keys to Success, which is live on the ThinkTech live streaming network series. Weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We are your hosts. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome to today's show. The goal of this show is to provide professional and personal development tools and profound insights on how to achieve success in life, career, and or business. Guy Benjamin, Managing Partner and Executive Director of Hawaii Medical College, was our guest on our last show, and his words of wisdom can be accessed on Newman Consulting Services' website, newmanconsultingservices.com, or our landing page, danilia.org. Joining us today as our honored guest is Mike Laurie. He's going to be Skyping, but we won't see him. We're having some minute technical challenges. However, we'll be able to hear Mike, okay? And he's the vice Pre president. president. He's the president of Transcendental Consulting. Consulting. <laughs> Mahalo for joining us today, Mike. Hey, thank you for having me. I wish I could see your beautiful faces, but a uh, little technical difficulty, but I'm happy to be here. Great. All right. Mike, share with our, yes, share with our, our viewers, uh, our listeners, uh, what prompted you to start your, your, your business, your sales consulting business? Well, uh, I started uh, off as in the sales business, you know, right after getting out of the Marine Corps. I uh, joined the Kirby Company in Honolulu, right mm -hmm. there where you guys are right now, okay. and started a sales career. And... Um, there was a gentleman uh, that was a consultant that came to our franchise, mm. and his name was Ernie Villanueva, and I remember him like he was yesterday, and he came in there to give us some training and uh, a little motivation, and I was brand new, and I hadn't had much success yet, mm. and this guy turned my head around. He gave me some belief. He made me believe that I could do it, mm -hmm. and... Um, I'll never forget, Ernie, because uh, I went out there with a new attitude, and I didn't get success right away, but I was willing to pay the price and do whatever it took to make that happen. And that day, I remember thinking, you know, I want to make people feel like that. I mm -hmm. want to make people believe that way. Mm -hmm. And once I got uh, some success in the sales field and uh, had something to offer, uh, the opportunity arose for me to do some training and I took it, and gradually it led me to where I am right now. That's so wonderful. So can I ask about how old were you? Um, well, I, well, I joined the Kirby Company after 12 years in the United States Marine Corps. Oh, okay. And um, so I was about 28 years old when I got started in uh, uh, selling. And um, my career in consulting didn't happen until about... 10 years later. Okay. Mm. Well, the great thing is about um, the fact that when you're young, it's, well, no matter what age, actually, but, you know, the point I was making about how young you were at the time is to be open to all um, advice as far as positive advice in your life, because that could be a turning point for anybody, right? Absolutely. And one of the things... A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. One and, of, you one know, of, I, I was in uh, the gym the other day and I, mm -hmm. and I train regularly in, mm -hmm. in the gym uh, and I have been for all my life mm -hmm. and uh, a gentleman came up to me that was uh, he didn't look to be in too great a shape and he looked like he needed a trainer frankly mm -hmm. and he said hey do you mind if I show you a technique to help you with what you're doing I was working my triceps mm -hmm. and I looked at him kind of like this is the last person that I would really <laughs> take advice from he needs help himself but I was cordial and um, I let him adjust my position uh -huh. as I was doing this tricep extension and unbelievable I had never gotten that kind of contraction in my tricep and he changed my workout yeah. and here's a guy that had I not taken the opportunity to be open with that uh, or, or been rude or, or anything else it, it, and this is something that I'll incorporate in my workouts forever. Right. Okay. Isn't that what, something because we can close ourselves off, right? And one of the things that we, we teach in our school is that you have to learn to listen and empty your cup and let someone else fill it up. Because uh, That's right. you need to change, and change is opportunity, and it works out for the best most of the time. Absolutely, John. They say the mind is like a parachute. It only works if it's open. That's so right. true. So I'm sure many people told you that sales is a really hard business to go into and that you should pursue a different career. Um, <laughs> how, how, did, how did you know it was right for you? Well, did, I'm going to tell you, when I got started, a lot of people near and dear to me 
was telling me that exact same thing. Mm. My friends, my family members, mm -hmm. particularly my father, mm -hmm. because I had been in the Marine Corps uh, for 12 years, mm -hmm. and I made a decision to get out and pursue something different. And he was really proud of what I was doing there. And when he heard what I was doing, he was so, so very discouraging. Mm -hmm. But I had some great leaders there, and they themselves were successful. They'd achieved uh, quite a bit of financial success and, and much beyond that. They were happy family people mm -hmm. and they were, they had an attractive lifestyle. They had mm -hmm. something that uh, attracted me. And uh, just by the grace of God, I was smart enough to listen and dumb enough to follow through. <laughs> and, uh, I had many times where I felt like quitting and, and mm -hmm. not giving up. You know, it's not a um, an instant thing when you learn this in the sales is a profession like anything else is and we can all get lucky in the beginning but it requires time to acquire those skills right. so I, I just hung on there and uh, uh made the decision that this was something i want to do i i got uh excited in the beginning because i i saw what was available i was able to procure some sales by looking at some of the people that were there and i think the main thing the main answer to that question is that I saw successful people, mm -hmm. and I started to model myself after them. Yeah. Okay, so we, you can, you imagine that you were going to be successful. Is that correct? Uh, oh, when did, uh, when did you imagine you were going to be successful? Well, uh, absolutely. Uh, actually, it was almost from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I had some incredible role models. One of which you had as a guest on your show, mm -hmm. Mr. Sal Cervera, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he had a lifestyle, and he made it believable for me. Yeah. He was a lot like me, and he had the things at that time. Of course, I've uh, some of my values have changed since then, but at the top of my priority list at that time was I wanted to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Sal was always at the, a brand-new Mercedes sitting outside with uh, enough jewelry. He had, a, like, a Mr. T starter <laughs> kit uh, at that time, uh -huh. and... He just made it really attractive uh -huh. uh, for me to stick around, and uh -huh. I could, re and he was very relatable. That's great. So I just hung in there and uh, put one foot in front of the other, and worked like there wasn't no prayer, and uh -huh. prayed like there wasn't no work, uh -huh. and combined those two <laughs> things together, and it unfolded. And one of the things that we heard you say is that you mirrored and modeled successful people, uh -huh. and that's yes, one sir. of the things that we share as well. If you would like to have something, talk to someone that has it. Yeah. And they'll be more than happy to share with you how to get it. Exactly. So was Not there, a question. Yeah. Was there ever a time in your journey that you thought you would fail? And how did you overcome that? Well, <laughs> was there any time? There was a few times, especially in the very beginning. Yeah. Actually, within the first 30 days, I was a very slow starter. <laughs> and uh, I, I went out and I gave it the old college go and it wasn't working out for me and i waited until the distributors weren't around and i came back in and turned in my stuff and <laughs> said this just ain't for me and i um walking out the door to my car and uh my distributor showed up and he said hey what are you are you quitting and i said yeah you know this is just not for me and he said the magic words he said uh wow i thought marines were tough uh oh <laughs> Hit the button right there. So I, I turned around, and the biggest lesson I got out of that yeah. is don't quit five minutes before the miracle. Yes. Whatever you do, what a defining moment that was for me right there. Mm. That I made that decision to turn around and to put my head down. And, you know, they say everybody wants to go to heaven, but don't mm. nobody want to die. Yeah. And anything yeah. worth having, there's a price to pay. Absolutely. Okay. What, what were some of the... the the mistakes that you made on your path, on your journey to success, and how did you push through? Well, there have been multiple uh, mistakes that I made. <laughs> you know, when I first got involved in sales, and selling is one of the highest paying professions yeah. in our country, and I would achieve some success and then back off and not be consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, okay. this was a, a recipe for disaster for me, and it caused uh, ups and downs mm -hmm. that a lot of people talk about mm -hmm. in the sales field. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just about uh, that level of consistency, mm -hmm. showing up every day and doing scheduled activities, mm -hmm. you know, the following a structure, if you will. And the, the, the biggest thing I learned about 
that particular profession, if that is, if it's being taught in principle with principles which are universal and everlasting, uh, and you're willing to follow those principles, it doesn't take a lot of skill. The skill is developed along the way of following the structure. If you're willing to just do the thing and follow the structure, inevitably you'll develop the timing and the skills and the techniques. Absolutely, and you know that not only applies to business, it applies to life, it applies to marriage, it applies to a whole load of um, things that we go through in our life. And it's really about consistency, having the basic outline, the basic um, foundation. You know, one of the things John's always said uh, from the moment we were married is that, you know, we've got a strong foundation. You know, we could, the, the, if, if some bricks fall down every now and then, we've still got the strong foundation. And, and that's, that's the right. same thing for, for anything. And behavior is taught. Yeah. You know, you learn good behavior, you learn bad behavior. And the thing is, Indeed. Yeah. we want to learn more good behavior than bad. <laughs> well, we're going to take a short break. This is Keys to Success of the Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series. We're talking with Mike Lowry, President of Transcendent Consulting regarding Keys to Success. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We'll be back in a minute, so please stay tuned for more Keys to Success. Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Start your Pauhana weekend off with the show where I talk to people about issues pertinent to Hawaii. You can see my previous shows at my blog, kawilucas.com, and also on Think Tech's show. Sorry. Aloha, I'm Kaylee Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. If you want to be an informed citizen, we invite you to watch every week as we bring wonderful guests together on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network every Monday at 2 o'clock p.m. We talk with people who know what they're talking about when it comes to the economy or the government or to building a better society. So we'll see you then on Ehana Kako, which means let's work together every Monday at 2 o'clock p.m on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Keys to Success on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. We encourage you to call our hotline at 415-871-2474 to join our conversation or tweet us at thinktechhi if you have any questions or comments. We've been talking with Mike Lowry, President of Transcendent Consulting. I'm Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and again, I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome back to the show. Mike, are you still with us? I'm still with you, sir. All righty. Share with us uh, what does success means to you? Wow. Well, you know, I, I tell you, this is a, a, a tricky question because I think, I think to all of us, failure means the same thing. That means we, we're not... Uh, uh, it, the failure, the inability to um, reach a particular goal. But success is different to a lot of people. And, uh, you know, a lot of people equate success with fame and fortune. But if that were true, then people like Kurt Cobain and John Belushi and Robin Williams wouldn't have ended their lives in the tragic way that they ended it. Yeah. And for me, success means uh, wanting what I got. It means being okay with being happy with what I have and, and being happy with my lot. Mm -hmm. At the same time, working toward a worthy goal, working toward stretching myself and pushing myself. Mm -hmm. So that's my interpretation of success for me personally. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a, there's a quote that we, we shared with our viewers a, a while back. It said, uh, success is getting what you want. I mean, success is getting what you want. And uh, happiness is wanting what you get. Mm -hmm. and That's amen. <laughs> amen. So true. So what, um, <coughs> how do you maintain daily motivation and inspiration despite the obstacles, pushbacks and setbacks? I mean, one of the things I really loved when we were emailing each other, you, you emailed and you wrote, I am overwhelmed with goodness. And most of us would say, I'm really overwhelmed. But when I saw that, I thought, wow, that is so cool. I'm overwhelmed with goodness. So you turned a challenging into a real positive thing to say. 
So well, how, I'm how not do saying you do that? I, I, and I was just speaking to my friend that I'm consulting with up here in Seattle this mm -hmm. morning that uh, I have these moments, I mean, frequently now, that I become emotional mm -hmm. about my lot in life, mm -hmm. about what, where I am and what I'm doing. And uh, so, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just fired up and excited about the opportunities that continue to unfold mm -hmm. in front of me. Mm -hmm. So that just in general, I'm happy. But, you know, I kind of lost what the question was when you were talking. But <laughs> <laughs> you, you reminded right. me of how passionate I am about even this conversation yes. is incredible that I get to be on the other end of the phone with you guys. Yeah. And I got to sit and dine with you yeah. in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's just good. That's wonderful. Right. Now, our show is Keys to Success, and we have a, uh -huh. signature, a signature question that we ask each one of our guests, and we'll ask you, uh, what are your three top success habits, if you can share that with us? And expound well, on each one, okay. if you would. I think that, for me, is, you know, um, one of the things that uh, Dr. Uh, Stephen Covey put in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, is uh, seek first to understand and to be understood. And what I found that as I go through, uh, especially my chosen uh, field, mm -hmm. that first I got to do a lot more listening than I do talking. Okay. I got to be able to put myself in other people's shoes. Mm -hmm. And it's the habit that I've developed in the, and uh, it's a mantra that I have. And also really important to me is my quiet time in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, being spiritually grounded, mm -hmm. uh, taking that time every morning, no matter what, to be still mm -hmm. and okay. quiet. And also something that I got from Anthony Robbins is called, uh, he, his uh, acronym is CANI, C-A-N-I, a constant and never-ending improvement. Mm -hmm. To continually push myself in all areas of my life, physically, uh, spiritually, financially, emotionally, to be always, I always have my nose in a book. I'm always trying to uh, learn something. And if I could, I'll have that. You asked me for three, but I want to give you four. Well, give five and, if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> that, but that fourth one is something that I got from the late. Zig Ziglar, mm -hmm. and he said, "If you help enough people get what they want, yeah. you'll always have what you want." Oh, that's so true, isn't it? Yeah, Zig Ziglar is one yeah. of our top yeah. top people too. Uh, we we that's went nice. to as many Zig 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 Zig, Zig, Zig Ziglar uh, uh, seminars. seminars as we could mm -hmm. we could get our hands on. Yeah. You know, yes, his, sir. He's books. incredible. He's an incredible young. Well, he was an incredible, wonderful soul. Right. Absolutely. What is the most valuable lesson that you learned at this stage of your life and career? Ah, uh, well, I would say one is that energy flows where attention goes. Mm -hmm. That wherever I put my attention, bad, good, bad, or indifferent, that that's where my energy is going to go, mm -hmm. and that thing will grow. Right. And there's magic in that. That if I really understand that, that I put my things, my attention on things that are edifying and uplifting mm -hmm. and don't get too distracted from there mm -hmm. and keep them on my goals. And the other one is another quote from Dr. Stephen Covey. He says, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't get caught up in the thick of the thinness mm -hmm. to keep my focus on the direction that I want to go. You know, I, I did this uh, uh, thing with Anthony Robbins on the Firewalk deal. And one of the things he was talking about is when they train race car drivers, how that they, they make sure that you, you, you're, uh, uh, if you go into a slide and you start to lose control of the car and you start to go into the wall, don't look at the wall. Right. <laughs> if you look so at the true. wall, you naturally start to steer in that direction. Right. We got to keep our eyes on the prize. The, the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing, keep the focus on what we want. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting because John and I, we do a lot of goal setting and so forth. And we're always focused on 
what is the end result that we want? No matter what we go through in between, because there's a lot of things that happen, what is the end result that we want to achieve? And when you focus on the end result, you'd be amazed that you achieve it because you're, yes, you're focused. Yeah. And, and we, we also liken it to driving a car. Mm -hmm. The windshield is a lot bigger than the rearview mirror. So Son, keep, absolutely. keep your attention on the forward. windshield, you know, looking yeah. forward. And look, look behind you. You, you. you have to know what's back there, but don't dwell on it. Like you say, the energy flows where you keep your mind going. Right. So what's the yes, one sir. key question that, you, that every entrepreneur should be asking themselves? Well, I would think for myself personally, I'm very familiar with that question. Mm -hmm. And that is... What's the most important thing that I could be doing in this moment? Mm -hmm. And sometimes the answer is nothing. Mm -hmm. Relaxing, yeah. okay. <laughs> reading. But what's the most important thing that's gonna take me in the direction that I wanna go mm -hmm. in this very moment? Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, yeah, what other counsel would you give our viewers and our listeners on uh, pursuing their careers and their dreams? Uh, I got to tell you that uh, it, it's it, an epiphany that I had a few <laughs> years back, and that was uh, discovering, stopping and taking the time to figure out what my core values are mm -hmm. and uh, prioritizing them. Mm -hmm. I had never done that before. Mm. I had them all backwards. Mm. I was chasing things that were, I'd never taken the time to sit and reflect what's most important to me. Mm. And what order are those things in? Yeah. It's life changing. Yeah. It's absolutely life changing. Okay. And I was setting goals without understanding what those things were. Mm -hmm. And I redid my whole goals mm -hmm. starting from the very end Mm -hmm. when I'm about to check out of here, and I think I got another 42 years left in me. Yeah, at least. <laughs> I believe it. And uh, I started there, uh, and it started with those core values. Mm -hmm. And if I could, just let me tell you the, the top five of those things. Please. And that's the first one, is that my relationship with my creator is the very top thing, the most important thing in my life. Yes. And I didn't realize that until I stopped and started judging what, where things were. Mm -hmm. And next to that is is the uh, providing uh for my family and making a uh, a sanctuary for them and loving them mm -hmm. and nurturing them and uh, the third one is to my health and my fitness uh to to stay healthy to eat good to exercise regularly mm -hmm. and the fourth one is learning mm -hmm. i thrive on learning yeah. and Last but not least, and there's 18 of these things for me, I'm talking about the five, top five, is, is teaching and giving myself away. Yes. And my goals are based on those things. That's great. You know, uh, one, of our, one of our top in our top five is uh, happiness. And I think a lot of people want happiness in their lives, but they're not really clear about what that means to them. And actually for John and I, even though, you know, we've, we've been doing this for so many years, when we actually sat down and talked about what makes us happy, it, we, it took a lot, it was a really long, wonderfully enlightening discussion between us about that. And so, You're giving me goosebumps. Yo, You're giving me goosebumps It's so right now. great to actually sit down and, I, and define what happiness means to you. And so we strongly recommend that to our listeners to do and, that. And the thing that gave us an epiphany is this. When we sat down and we talked about this, we looked at success is not about the assets that we've accumulated and the money that we have. Mm -hmm. It's how much joy and happiness that we have in our lives. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And that is Indeed. the key for us when it comes to success. Yeah. Um, Indeed. Yeah. And to have that clarity yes. of what's most important, yes. it's powerful. Yes, clarity very, very is powerful. powerful. And we get, so many people get caught up, well, we all do, we get caught up in everyday living that we really don't have that clarity or we'll say we'll do it later. It's interesting because, um, you know, we do meditation and so forth. And I remember when we first started, you know, there was just never enough time to do meditation. And now we do at least an hour a day. And so, it, you wow. know, it just becomes a priority. It's just like brushing yeah. your teeth. 
you know, and you'd be amazed the different the things that happen as a result of just that still time that you talked about and that meditation is critical. Yeah, you're absolutely. Mm -hmm. it's, your it's unconscious a, competence, you know, yeah. that unconscious competence is a powerful thing mm -hmm. because the mind is always working. Mm -hmm. We just need to keep it going in the right direction. Right. It is, and that still time gives us, us the opportunity to yeah. do some programming, yeah, to put good. in us a, a, what we want, and to get clear about those things. Yeah. It's programming for me. Right. Okay. So um, if you could ask someone who's more successful than you one question, what would it be? Uh, I would ask them for some, some of their time. I would ask them, could I buy them lunch? All could right. I spend some time with them? Wonderful. You know, almost anything that I need to information I need to get about my profession or my passions, I can find in a book or on the internet. Yeah. But uh, to see people's behavior, you know, people that I admire, yeah. to be able to watch how they behave. Yeah. I would have loved to sit with Thomas Paine yeah. or uh, Muhammad Mahatma Gandhi or Martin Luther King yeah. and see how their behavior was. To enjoy a conversation with people like that yeah. you know just recently i was able to uh, uh sit with the with the president of the united states and wow. uh check out his mannerisms and mm -hmm. how i didn't have any questions for him i it was just a joy to be in that company and to have my feet under the same table oh fantastic well you know unfortunately mike we're out of time what a great conversation we'll, Yay, we'll have to wrap it thank up you. yeah Mike Lowry's words of wisdom with regards to keys to success can be found on Newman Consulting Services webpage, newmanconsultingservices.com and landingpage, danelia.org. Thanks to you, our viewers and listeners, for tuning in. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, Zuri Bender, our floor manager, Nick Sexton, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer who puts it all together. Thank you, Mike, so much for joining us today. What Thank wonderful you. conversation. It was just really, really great, your insights to success. Okay, keys, keys to Success Absolutely. won't be back next uh, Thursday. It won't be back on the 13th, but it will come back on the 20th at 11 a.m. as the original scheduled time. And uh, we ask that you please tune in and ask your friends and family to do so as well. So my name is Danelia. And, John, are you going to share a famous quote? Oh, yes. Uh, this quote is from Theodore Roosevelt. The most important single ingredient and the formula of success is knowing how to get along with people. We thank you all. Thank Ma you. Aloha. Aloha.